notre conférencier du colloquium aujourd'hui, Nicolas Bergeron de l'École normale supérieure. C'est aussi notre conférencier Eisenstadt. Pour la semaine prochaine, il y aura un atelier qui, va être, qui a été un peu constitué autour de sa stratégie de conférence Eisenstadt. Donc, ça nous fait très plaisir de l'avoir ici, au moins virtuellement, en esprit. Et donc, il va nous parler aujourd'hui de trigonometric functions and the modular symbols. Nicolas. So thanks for the introduction, Henry. I, I'm pleased. I would have liked to be really in Montreal, but at least I'm very pleased to be here tonight and next week. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, tonight for me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I will talk about trigonometric function and modular symbols. So why trigonometric function? Uh, because to quote uh, uh, André Veil, I put in my abstract and I want to say it uh, again uh, in uh, um, Eisenstein, um, I mean, the um, Eisenstein ways to introduce uh, elliptic functions can uh, also um, be beautifully exemplified in the simpler case of trig trigonometric functions. And, uh, and in this case, it not merely provides an illuminating introduction to Eisenstein theory, but also the simplest proof of a series of results that was already Uh, discovered by uh, Euler uh, some years before. And, uh, and so it illuminates the theory of elliptic functions. So some, some stuff I want to discuss eventually, uh, but it starts with most basic, uh, uh, more basic stuff. Uh, and so I will start with, uh, with this and especially the so-called addition formula for uh, Foucault tangent following uh, uh, briefly um, Eisenstein's way to, to prove it. Uh, So let me explain how uh, Eisenstein introduced uh, trigonometric function and especially the cotangent function. He, uh, he, formed, he wants to, to build a, a periodic function. So he forced per periodicity by uh, considering a series like, uh, like the one uh, on the slide, the sum of one over x plus m. And uh, I put a little e uh, uh, here. To, uh, to say that, it's, uh, Eisen, that it is uh, Eisenstein's summation, because of course the sum is not uh, absolutely convergent. So Eisenstein's summation is just that you sum from minus big M to, uh, to big M and take the limit as uh, big M tends to infinity. And so you con uh, Eisenstein considered this function and, uh, and uh, proves in, in fact, so He denotes this function as uh, 1, x, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, 1, x, and 1, x is uh, p times epsilon x in my notation. And, uh, and what he proved is that this function is uh, precisely a, a cotangent of uh, pi x. So in brief, epsilon x, he proves, is the same as cotangent pi x. But in, uh, in the way to prove that, uh, he proves a, a, a formula, which is written here at the end of, the, um, of this quotation, which is the so-called uh, uh, addition formula for cotangent, which I, I will uh, restate here. Uh, if you take two uh, complex numbers, which are not, integ not integer, and the sum of them is not a, an integer either, then you have this uh, nice formula epsilon x times epsilon y minus epsilon x times epsilon x plus y minus epsilon y times epsilon x plus y is equal to one. So it's a constant equal to one. And uh, the way you prove that, I, I won't give the full proof, uh, but I recommend to, to read uh, either Eisenstein, if you can read German, or, or, uh, or Weil's book, which essentially copy the Uh, the Eisenstein's, uh, uh, the proof uh, by Eisenstein, but the, the explanation for that can, comes from the, the, the analog of this before taking summation. And the analog of this formula before taking summation is just that one over xy minus one over x time x plus y minus one over y time x plus y is equal to zero, which is quite easy to, to check uh, by yourself. And, uh, and now formally, what, what does uh, Eisenstein is to sum this relation, 
but there is some regularization procedure. So formally, what he's saying is saying that uh, uh, when you, you consider this, uh, the right hand side, uh, the left hand side of the of the addition formula, then this is the sum, the, the same as the sum of one over PQ plus one over QR plus one over RP, where P belongs to all the integer, uh, all the elements which are, can be written as an integer plus X. Q belongs to the integer plus Y and R belongs to the integer plus minus X minus Y. So, it, and you uh, and you ask that uh, this sum is such that p plus q plus r is equal to zero. So you you force this equality, and then if you consider this uh, sum in a regularized way, then uh, eventually you show that it's not really zero, but it's a constant, and it's uh, and you can check then what con what is the constant, uh, and you and you find that it is equal to one. So it's a very beautiful uh, way to derive this, uh, uh, this uh, addition formula. And you will see that it will eventually be important for me in the general picture that uh, cotangent comes from the uh, averaging one over X with respect to uh, translation by, uh, by integer. So from now on, I will stick to, uh, I will uh, elaborate on this formula. And I guess one of the first, uh, mathematician to see this formula uh, in the way I want to, to think of it, meaning uh, as a co-cycle property was uh, uh, such. He really looked at this formula as a co-cycle property and that's what I want to describe in, the, uh, in, this, uh, in this lecture. And to do so, I will now speak about, um, uh, uh, rather than cohomology and co-cycle, I, uh, I will discuss uh, modular symbols. Uh, so that will be my next uh, uh, character in this lecture, uh, the notion of uh, modular symbols. And, uh, and the, the modular symbols live, live uh, in, uh, in the so-called uh, Poincaré upper half plane, which is a model for uh, hyperbolic geometry. Uh, so you, I guess you, you almost, you, most of you have uh, already encountered this uh, model of uh, hyperbolic geometry. What I have drawn here are geodesic lines in, uh, in, uh, in H so if, with respect to the natural uh, metric, which I, I won't use, so I won't define it, uh, which is the hyperbolic metric here. And uh, the the bottom, the bottom line is the, is the set of points at infinity minus, uh, uh, minus one point here, which is at infinity, and here you have R. So the, the boundary at infinity of Poincaré upper half plane is all the, is, contains all the reals and the, point, and the point at infinity. So the geodesic line I've drawn here goes from uh, one point in the boundary to another. And, uh, and they are parallel uh, to each other here because they don't uh, intersect. So that, that, that would be the, the second uh, main character. But in fact, what I will consider are rather geodesic line, which uh, goes from one rational point to another. Uh, rational points uh, uh, and the rational point can be uh, infinity. So here, for example, I can consider this geodesic that goes from R to S where both R and S belongs to Q. But I, I can also consider uh, some geodesic that goes from uh, infinity, let's say, to, uh, to some uh, other, uh, other point, so let's say P over Q. And, uh, and this will be the only geodesic I want to consider. And, uh, and this will be almost what I will call a modular symbol. So what will be a, exactly a modular symbol? Uh, is uh, so I, I, I take the closure of such a geodesic that goes from one um, uh, one um, rational to another, but uh, I will consider this is a abelian group delta 
so generated by all these uh, pairs, uh, these uh, geodesic lines, but uh, submitted to the relation, uh, the triangle relation, meaning that uh, if you have, uh, let's say, three rational R, S, T, I want to say that uh, the geodesic from R to S plus the geodesic from S to T plus the geodesic from T to R, because they bound a triangle, uh, the sum will be zero in, uh, in the abelian group uh, delta. And similarly here, so for example, uh, I can take uh, infinity here uh, zero, and here from zero to say minus one, and, uh, and go back to, to infinity. And I have some uh, relation in my, uh, in my abelian group delta. And the abelian group delta is exactly that. Uh, the, the only relation are given by these uh, triangles. And, uh, and the class of a geodesic from R to S will be called uh, uh, a modular symbol. So that's uh, uh, what I say in the next slide. Uh, the class of, uh, of R uh, S will, uh, is a modular symbol. And I will be especially interested in particular uh, uh, modular symbol, the one that uh, are called unimodular, uh, which corresponds to uh, geodesic from two rational, uh, let's say A over C and B over D, such that the, uh, the matrix gamma is of determinant one. So uh, it, me it means that AD, in terms of the rational, AD minus BC is equal to one. So that's, uh, um, that's particular cases of, um, of, uh, of modular symbols. And when I say that gamma acts on the, on the, on the modular symbol infinity gamma, it's uh, related to the natural action of gamma of, um, of SL2Z on H. by homography, which extend to the boundary by sending a, a rational to uh, P, P over Q to this rational, AP plus BQ over CP plus DQ. So you have uh, an action of uh, SL2Z on H, which extends to the boundary, and then it maps the infini infinity to A over C and zero to B over D. And that's, uh, that's why I have written the modular symbol RS in that, uh, in that way. So here, these are, the, these are particular modular symbols. And the, 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 lemma, uh, the first lemma I want to, to state, which is a a classical lemma is that the abelian group delta, the abelian group of modular symbol, is generated by unimodular ones. So since it's nice to have a proof in a math talk, and this one is very elementary, I will uh, I will do uh, I will prove this. Uh, and uh, in fact, the proof uh, uh, is uh, can be understood uh, only by looking uh, at a picture. So here here is the uh, the picture we want to look at uh, is the uh, the so-called Ferre triangulation. So in the Ferret triangulation, we draw all the unimodular symbols. So all the points you are seeing here are, are rationals. And you put, um, you put geodesic between two rational, if and only if these two rational, P, let's say PQ and P, P prime, Q prime satisfy the relation PQ prime minus Q P prime equal to plus or minus one because I don't care about the, the orientation when I draw the when I draw the, when I draw the the Ferre uh, uh, triangulation. Uh, so let me uh, let me let me put some uh, uh, some some uh, let's see here let's say here we have zero here uh, uh, one uh, so. Each time you have here my minus one, minus one half, one half, and here you see um, here this is 
one third, two third, and so on. Uh, and maybe I would say that this one is three quarter. And, uh, and let's now try to prove the lemma. So in the lemma, I want to decompose any geodesic, any modular symbol, not only the unimodular one, as a sum of unimodular one. So let's, let's take one modular symbol. So to be, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what we can take for one of the rational, let's say uh, two third. And because uh, there is in the action of SL2Z, we can always assume that the first rational is at infinity. So let's start with uh, up to translation by SL2Z. We can just start with this, this modular symbol, which is not unimodular. It's not part of the ferret triangulation. And we want to decompose this, uh, unimodular, this, uh, modular, this uh, modular symbol into a sum of unimodular ones. And in fact, we just have to look at the picture and, and, uh, and, and use, for example, this one from one half, uh, from um, two thirds to three quarter, then from three quarter to one, and then one infinity. And so in the end, This modular, symbol, this, uh, this modular symbol that go from infinity to S equal two third decomposes as a, a sum of three, oh, uh, of, three um, of, uh, of three modular symbol, namely We have, so as I said, S is equal to third. And uh, uh, what, we, what we get is that the modular symbol from infinity to two third is equal to the boundary of two triangles. Let me write the two triangles. The first one is here and the other one is adjacent is here. So the boundary of the first triangle goes is the one which involves infinity, two third, three quarter, plus the boundary of the other triangle that involves infinity, three quarter, one, and then minus My, uh, minus the, uh, the, ge the, ge the, the, ge the remaining geodesic that are uh, here. So it's um, uh, two third, three quarter, minus three quarter, one, and one infinity. So in the end, in the group delta, since the triangles are, uh, are zero, we have decomposed our modular symbol into unimodular ones. And that's, um, uh, of course, here that's just an example, but uh, we understand that this uh, can be done in, uh, in full generality. And, uh, and the, the proof in the end gives the following statement that uh, an, uh, an, any modular symbol from infinity to S decomposed as a sum of triangle minus some translate of uh, infinity zero, where the translate are given by these uh, matrices, uh, where the P and Q are the partial quotient of the uh, continued fraction. So what we have done uh, geometrically is just to rediscover the continued fraction algorithm associated to this rational number S. So that's, uh, that concludes the proof of the, of the lemma. Uh, any uh, any uh, modular symbol can be decomposed as a, as a sum of uh, unimodular one. And so why, uh, why is it interesting? Because uh, now I will define some map uh, that I will define only on the unimodular symbol and then extend using, uh, using this, uh, this lemma. And this map will make a relation between the two characters of, 
uh, of the talks, uh, namely the first character are trigonometric function and the second modular symbol. So that's, uh, that will be the third part of my talk, uh, to go from modular symbols to trigonometric functions. And that's how we will see the uh, addition relation as some kind of uh, um, uh, co-cycle property, even though I haven't defined yet what is a co-cycle. And so to do so, instead of working with trigonometric function, I will uh, work with a trigonometric function, or in fact, a meromorphic function on uh, C2 mod Z2, uh, but uh, quotiented by constant. So that I killed the right-hand side of the addition relation, the constant part of the addition uh, relation. And the, the observation that I want to make, uh, which is a, a very uh, easy observation from what we have uh, seen, is that uh, uh, there is a, a map from the Abelian group of modular symbol to the uh, meromorphic function on C2 mod Z2, uh, quotiented by the, by the constants. And this map is, uh, uh, can be uh, defined in the following way. If you can take the class of a unimodular symbol, gamma, associated to, to a matrix in SL2Z, then I will associate to it a product of uh, cotangent, which is just the, uh, the product of epsilon x times epsilon y, but uh, after the action of the matrix uh, gamma. So here, this is just gamma acting on the function epsilon x, epsilon y. And uh, so in other words, I, I replace x, y by uh, uh, gamma inverse applied to, um, to the column matrix uh, x, y. And because gamma is in SL2Z, gamma inverse also, so this respects uh, uh, the, the lattice Z2, and, um, and we end up with a, another uh, function that is periodic with respect to, uh, to Z2. So by definition, it's clear that it is SL2Z invariant. We still have to check that is a, it is a well-defined map from delta to the meromorphic constant Mod out by uh, meromorphic function mod out by the constant, but this is exactly what give us, gives us uh, uh, the addition uh, relation, since uh, uh, we have to, to check that uh, when you have a triangle, it's uh, this map, this, uh, uh, this triangle is mapped to zero. So let's consider the, the triangle. Uh, infinity, zero, minus one, infinity. And since all the triangles are obtained from this one by, by SL2Z translation, it's enough to consider only uh, this one. And uh, the associated to the geodesic from zero to infinity, it's easy to check that the map we have constructed, it just, it just epsilon x times epsilon y. And similarly, the geodesic from, um, uh, let's say, minus one to zero is epsilon x times epsilon x plus y. And the geodesic from infinity to minus one is epsilon y times epsilon x plus y. So now if you re read what you see in this triangle, then you see epsilon x times epsilon y minus epsilon x times epsilon x plus y minus epsilon y times epsilon x, x plus y. So, so this, uh, the addition relation tells you exactly that this map is well defined on the, on, on the quotient delta. So this map more geometrically tells you a way to decorate the uh, Faré uh, triangulation. So let me uh, uh, write this uh, again. Uh, if I put, uh, let's say, minus one, zero, one, two, uh, then what we are doing here is to assign a product of, uh, I mean, a, uh, a, pro a product of two uh, cotangent uh, uh, function 
Here you take the function epsilon x, epsilon y, as we have just seen. Here it's epsilon x times epsilon x plus y. Here epsilon y, epsilon x plus y, and so on. Here, for example, you have um, uh, epsilon x times epsilon 2x plus y, and I, I can continue like that. This one, for example, I, would be the last, is just uh, epsilon x times epsilon 3x plus y, and you can play with this uh, Faraday triangulation and, sh and show that uh, there is a, uh, an equivalent way to decorate your, uh, your Faraday triangulation with product of epsilon uh, functions. And it's, uh, so as I said, it's equivalent. It means that it's, it's invariant when you move everything by uh, SL2Z. So when you move a geodesic to another by SL2Z and you move the product of function by the change of coordinate given by uh, uh, the same matrix, then uh, you will, uh, everything will be co coherent. So that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the observation I wanted to, to make. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it can be, uh, at that point, I think uh, it's, you can think of it as a, as a compact way or geometric way to, uh, uh, to look at the uh, addition formula. But it's not clear that the addition formula has really something to do with the modular symbol. I mean, it's just a way to, uh, to draw the addition formula. It's a compact way to say, okay, uh, I, to, to, to understand all the uh, nice formula you can easily derive from the addition formula. Because if you take, uh, uh, I don't know, um, a triangle like uh, uh, a pass, um, like this, then you can decompose it into triangles. So you know that the function you are reading along this path, if you sum them, then it will be zero, at least modulo the, the constant again. So that's a compact way to say, to say it. Uh, but what I want to, to say now is that it's, there is more than just that in that, uh, in that picture. And, um, and uh, uh, in fact, this is some kind of analog of something much more fancy that I, I don't want, I won't discuss uh, today. But uh, in some sense, this map is an elementary incarnation of a family of maps. Uh, so it's much, much more elementary than the family of map that uh, I mentioned here. But uh, there is a whole family of map that goes from modular symbols or rather in general, partial modular symbols. I will explain what it is later. And, uh, and the map goes to, uh, some more algebraic stuff uh, and the, the, math, the more fancy stuff are a K theory, uh, K theory group. And so there, there, is a, there is a whole zoo of, of such maps uh, that were studied by uh, plenty uh, uh, authors. Uh, I mentioned here Stevens, Glenn Stevens, uh, uh, Bruce York, that is a, uh, that were, uh, a student of, uh, that was, a, uh, she was a student of uh, Glenn Stevens, uh, Ramiar Sharifi, Goncharov, uh, Bruno, studied all these, uh, all these map. And, um, and uh, next week, let's make a, a little bit of, of uh, advertisement. Then next week, there will be talks by uh, Sharifi and, uh, and also a talk by uh, Le Couturier that will precisely this fancy, uh, di uh, discuss this fancy map from uh, partial modular symbol to, uh, to K-theory group. Uh, but I, I want to stick with the more elementary map. Uh, and, uh, and ask uh, a question that, uh, that comes naturally once you, uh, you have such a map from modular symbol to something, uh, any, uh, 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 any gamma invariant map from modular symbol to something, then you, you may wonder if this map is really, has really something to do with the uh, modular symbols. And if so, then there should be, uh, 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 some relation with uh, hidden symmetries on the modular symbol side uh, that are called uh, uh, echo operators. And so that's what I want to discuss now. What about the echo operators? How do they act on this, uh, on this map? Uh, is there something uh, from the modular world to say about the relation between products of uh, cotangent functions? 
So to do so, I have to, uh, to discuss a little bit what are um, echo operators and, uh, and, and make some computations uh, with this uh, echo operator. And so that's, uh, that's the first part of, um, of the talk. Uh, and as I said, the echo operators come from uh, hidden symmetries of, uh, of, the, um, uh, of what I am considering. And the hidden symmetries will, will come from, uh, uh, from a mono, an action of the monoid uh, of the, not, not only, uh, I mean, it comes from the remark that not only SL2Z acts on the, both uh, the modular symbol and, uh, and C2 mod Z2, but, uh, but in fact, all the integral metrics uh, that are inver invertible. Uh, so if you could, the, the action is the, is the one um, is the one you can think of immediately. So if you have an element in uh, in this uh, uh, M2Z in the intersection of M2Z with GL2Q, then uh, it acts on the on modular symbol simply as um, As, as uh, SL2Z ma uh, ma matrix were acting. And also, because it's an integral matrix, then it acts it acts on the uh, on the on C2, mod Z2. It, it respects the, uh, the lattice. So once you have this, uh, these two actions, you may wonder, uh, I mean, you may uh, define some uh, uh, a natural collection of, uh, of uh, operators that give uh, more symmetry to this, uh, uh, to this picture. So let's, uh, let me explain where comes this uh, operator. So you start with a matrix that belongs to M2Z intersected with GL2Q. And, uh, and you consider the double class associated to this matrix. The double class with respect to SL2Z. And this double class, in fact, can be decomposed to a finite union of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, left classes, uh, of SL, left SL, uh, SL2 classes. So the, the DJ are matrices in GL2Q, and there are finitely many uh, of it. And, uh, and once you have this, then I will define the operator that I will call TG, uh, acting on, the map, on our map C uh, that, we, uh, that we consider. We just take uh, the pullback of C composed with CG, by, uh, with GJ, by, uh, by the map uh, GJ. So recall that. Uh, uh, GJ acts on modular symbol, so you can consider GJ of, of a modular symbol, evaluate it, uh, evaluate C on this new modular symbol. This gives a, a function, a meromorphic function, and you can pull back this function by the action of GJ. And what I'm claiming is that uh, this, is, this is well defined, it does not depend on the SL2Z class. Uh, and indeed, uh, the reason is just that we have seen that the pullback of C composed with gamma is equal to C if gamma belongs to SL2Z. That was exactly the uh, definition of the SL2Z invariant. So the fact that C is SL2Z invariant tells you that the operator TG defines like this is well defined. It does not depend on the, on the class, uh, on the left, left class, uh, you, on the representative of the left class uh, GJ that you choose. And so that defines a, a whole collection of new symmetries uh, on, the, on, the, on the map C. And uh, these are called the echo operators. So usually, what we call the echo operators is by choosing G 
to be of the form P001. This is a matrix in M2Z, which is invertible in, uh, in, uh, in uh, over Q. And for each prime P, this gives an operator, which is called TP. So maybe to understand what we are doing here, let's, call, let's make some computation with this uh, operator and uh, with this TP and start with T2. So we can write down what exactly gives T2 in that case. So again, we take uh, this matrix P001 and take first P equal two. Then uh, I don't want to write all the matri uh, matrices because uh, in France is, uh, we are approaching 10 p.m. So it's, uh, it's too late for me to do that now, but, uh, uh, but we, you can trust me uh, that uh, the action of T2, if you evaluate uh, T2 of C at the, end, at the identity class and compute the meromorphic function, then what you get is this uh, linear uh, combination of product of uh, cotangent function. So epsilon, epsilon of 2x, epsilon y, epsilon x epsilon 2y epsilon 2x epsilon x plus x epsilon 2y times epsilon x plus y. So you have this, uh, this formula, which is not so complicated, but it's only prime p2. And uh, one can check by hand that uh, this, um, uh, that uh, this operator t2, in fact, acts on c like another simpler operator Two, so what is this two star? It's something very simple, simple. Two star of C X Y is just C of two X two Y. So in other words, this formula means that T two of C, uh, let's say evaluate in, uh, in identity and then in X Y minus two C, 2x 2y minus c xy is equal to zero. And this formula is a little bit more uh, complicated and interesting that, uh, than the one you, you, you get just by looking at the Ferre uh, triangulation. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice game to try to uh, to check it by n, so let's uh, let me explain where it comes from. Uh, it ca again, it it can be, in that case it can be uh, reduced to, um, to to the addition formula. In fact, if you take the addition formula with x equal y, then what you get is two. epsilon 2x, because there is two contribution of x, epsilon x plus y, times uh, epsilon uh, x um, is equal to epsilon x squared minus one. So in other words, you end up with this formula, epsilon 2x equal to one half of epsilon x minus one minus epsilon y minus one. So that's a, a, a first thing. And the other thing is that uh, epsilon, um, again, from the, from the addition formula, epsilon x plus y times epsilon x minus one plus epsilon y minus one is equal to one minus epsilon x minus one, epsilon one, minus one. And if you use these two formula and put them in, uh, in the expression for T2, then it's not hard to get this, uh, this nice uh, uh, compact uh, expression. So again, you have a nice compact expression for uh, surprise, I mean, uh, some uh, complicated identities between uh, uh, between the cotangent function. And you might wonder what happened if you change the prime. So of course, what I do in that situation, what every what you would do in that situation is try now P equal three. So then the formulas become more and more complicated uh, 
uh, when you try to write the AQ operator, so you, you end up with this, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, formula for T3. But again, same compact form, T3 minus three times uh, the, the pullback by the multiplication by, by three and two variables, minus one, applied to, zero, to C is equal to zero. So you still have the same, uh, the same kind of, uh, of, of formula. And so you go, you go on and try P equal five. The formulas become messier and messier, but uh, you can still check at least, uh, uh, okay, see, so do, this I, I haven't done by hand. Uh, after I've asked um, Pierre Charolois to compute with, to, to do with computers and it works. Uh, it gives this, um, this formula. And you can, uh, you can try higher and higher primes. So of course you, you find some, uh, uh, some pattern and, uh, and now you wonder why, why is there such a, such a pattern? And that's, uh, that leads to the fifth section of my talk today. A few questions and, uh, and a theorem. And uh, the question, the first question, of course, after I, I've said that, is, uh, uh, is there a, so first, is the general pattern here that TP minus P times the pullback by uh, multiplication by P minus one apply to C, is it always equal to zero? And, uh, and you don't want to write down the formulas for, uh, to, to do that. Uh, another another question that uh, is there, I would say, from the beginning, is that we we to, to really have a cosecond property or to really relate to modular symbol or product of trigonometric function, uh, we had uh, uh, we have uh, quotiented the, the the space of uh, of meromorphic functions on C two mod Z two by the constant. This is not very uh, satisfactory uh, because eventually it would be nice to to be able to evaluate these meromorphic functions, say, or anyway, I want to deal, to say something about real product of, uh, of, uh, of meromorphic functions, not uh, modulo constant. So can one leave this map to, uh, to meromorphic function? Not immediately, of course, because uh, uh, we cannot replace the, uh, we cannot kill the constant in the, in the addition formula, but is there a way to have a, a nice map from, um, modular symbol to meromorphic functions. And once we are able to say something about uh, uh, product of two uh, quotangent function, one may wonder if one can say something about general n-fold product of, uh, of quotangent functions. And since from the very beginning, I told you that uh, 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 looking at the trigonometric function in Eisenstein's way was a way to understand his, uh, his view uh, or his construction of elliptic function. Now it's time to ask what about elliptic functions uh, in, uh, in general? So that's uh, some question and I, I will begin uh, to answer by, uh, to, uh, to, the first, um, to the first question. And, uh, and here I will need to, to discuss uh, now uh, cohomology. To, uh, to, so I will, uh, I will go from the picture of modular symbol, a gamma invariant map from modular symbol to meromorphic function to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the more fancy uh, notion of uh, cohomology, which captures the same, uh, the same thing. So, and that's exactly what I have written on the slide. I want to see gamma invariant map from modular symbol to meromorphic function as a, a class in a cohomology. So if you don't know what a cohomology is, you can just stick at the first, uh, at the first uh, uh, definition of modular symbol, but uh, I, I, I want to, to say something anyway, uh, but uh, on this, uh, on this uh, isomorphism, that he, let's say gamma is a finite, sorry, gamma is now a finite index subgroup. So you have a quotient H mod gamma, which is now uh, something, uh, which is a surface with some uh, puncture co uh, coming from the point at infinity. So this quotient is something like that. And, uh, 
And here you have some points at infinity that are classes of uh, rational points at the, on the boundary at infinity, uh, classes modulo the, the gamma action. And what we have uh, described is a way to say something about all the uh, modular symbols so the project, uh, that will project, let's say, on, on geodesic that go from one cusp to, a, to another, but you can do something like that also. And, uh, and so eventually, any cycle on the surface can be decomposed as, uh, uh, as uh, in homology as a, a linear combination of these modular symbols. And in fact, you can use geodesic, uh, you can look cycle that have, that have extremities in the quotient of the rational number by gamma. So in fact, this, uh, uh, this map from modular symbol, this gamma invariant map from modular symbol to meromorphic functions can be think, can be thought of as a, as a cohomology class on the quotient a small gamma to which you add, that is the star here, uh, the point at infinity, but you consider cycle relative to the boundary. So you can consider a cycle, a cycle which have boundary, but only in the boundary at infinity. And, uh, and, uh, and so what we have constructed before is, uh, is in fact a cohomology class with value in, uh, in some, uh, uh, so to be uh, rigorous, I, sh I should say that I consider this as a, as a sheaf corresponding to the uh, gamma action on this, uh, on this module. So that's a, that's a fancy way to talk about the, uh, the map we have, uh, uh, we have uh, encountered. And once you have this fancy way, then in fact, this, this map C, you can restrict it only to the interior of the cohomology. And, uh, and therefore, the map C give a class in this cohomology group here, which goes, which is a cohomology group, uh, H1 cohomology group of gamma, finite index subgroup of SL2Z, with values in the meromorphic fu functions here, uh, again, quotiented by the constant. So, and that's, that's, the, that's the way I want to see the map uh, I, uh, I have considered uh, uh, consider, uh, so far, because that's the right way to extend this map uh, uh, in, uh, more generally. And, uh, and, uh, and to get the, the following uh, theorem. And this, for, this theorem now is not only, uh, does not deal only with SL2Z, but it deals more generally with, um, uh, with SL and Z for any N. And what it says is that there exists some com something that, wants to, that will represent a cohomology class uh, uh, and more precisely, it is a group co-cycle. So what it means to be a group co-cycle, so it's a map from gamma to the n, to now note that there is no more bar, it's really the the, all the meromorphic function on cn mod zn. And the fact that it is a co-cycle uh, means that uh, if you take uh, n plus one element, let's say gamma zero up to gamma n, then the sum, from g, j equals zero to n of minus j disco cycle a string. And you evaluate on this element except that you erase gamma j. Then this is equal to zero. So you see it's very close to the, uh, to the condition, to, to, the condition on the, to pass to the quotient of modular symbol. And this is really close to that, uh, except that now we are dealing with uh, elements in the, in the group. So this means that it is a co-cycle and there is also, so this was co-cycle. And now there is also the meaning of homogeneous, which corresponds to the gamma invariant uh, of, uh, 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 in the, of the map C. And homogeneous means that if you translate this element uh, gamma one, gamma n by some element in gamma, let's say h, you translate, uh, I use this, uh, I use the right translation because that's my convention. Then 
this is equal this is equal to h désolé nicolas no. je ne vois pas de ces six écoles dans vos contacts <laughs> Sorry, Siri just uh, just uh, made it into that talk. So it's uh, equal to the translation of this form by H. That's that's exactly the uh, uh, what corresponds to the invariant cause uh, invariant uh, the invariance of C uh, if, uh, from the beginning. And so the the theorem tells you that there is such a map that so wants to generalize C. And that's what I, uh, that will be the content of the first, uh, of the first statement. The first statement is that the class, if n equal to the class of S trig, if you consider it modulo the constant in the image is really the same as the class of the map of the map C we have considered. So in H1, SL2Z, M bar. And in general, uh, S, the class of a, uh, S3 represents a non-zero cohomology class. What is the second part of the theorem? The second part of the theorem is a control of the, uh, uh, of the locus where uh, where the form associated to n tuple of uh, elements in gamma is uh, regular. So that's a good thing because then it means that you know where you can evaluate these, uh, these meromorphic functions. And the third part, part of the lemma, of course, of the theorem, I mean, is the echo equivalence that we are expecting. And so to have a precise statement, the theorem is the following. So again, you have this uh, homogeneous group co-cycle. It is non-zero in cohomology. So now it becomes a class of degree n minus one. You know exactly where it is regular. In fact, you, it is regular outside some uh, hyperplanes that uh, you can write down. And uh, the analog of, uh, of the action of the echo operator is if you, if you consider uh, uh, group in SLNZ, for each prime P, you have a, a whole collection of echo operators that depends on the integer K, which uh, uh, belongs, uh, which is less than N minus one. And you can write a precise uh, uh, formula for the equivalence under the echo operator. And if you, if you take K, uh, N equal two and K uh, equal one, you end up with the formula Cp minus p, p star minus one here. Yeah. So that explains that explains the uh, uh, the computation we had uh, made in the case uh, p equal two, three, and five. So that's um, that's the first part of the theorem, but it's it's a little bit deceptive compared to what I said before because. There is no nice formula. It's just a co-cycle for the moment uh, with values in a meromorphic form, but where are the cotangent function? And that's uh, something you can say, but you have to go to, uh, to uh, you have to, uh, to add some level. Don't work with SLNZ itself, but a, sub, a finite index subgroup. And, uh, and you have to extend not to all modular symbol, but only to partial modular symbol. What means partial modular symbol? It means that when you look at your, at your uh, surface H mod gamma, or in general, it will be a, uh, a manifold of higher dimension, then a partial modular symbol, it means that you only add some punctures, but not all. So you, are, uh, you have the right to go from here to here, here to here, and so on, but you don't, you don't go up to uh, the other uh, function. So it's only a partial modular symbol. And if you do that, then you have nice formula, uh, which leads to the uh, full meromorphic uh, function and can be written in terms of, uh, of cotangent function. 
I just uh, uh, I have just written one example because it's not uh, uh, the, uh, the general formula are not very uh, eliminating. Uh, but here you see the uh, so I take some integer m uh, uh, bigger than one, and I consider the modular symbol that are. Uh, not all the, uh, the unimodular symbol, but the one where the first coordinate a and b are invertible modulo m. So it's only partial modular symbol because you don't authorize every, uh, uh, every unimodular symbol. But then on this unimodular symbol, you have a very nice formula. Uh, and now it's, it really goes into the meromorphic function. So uh, there is no, you keep the constant in the in the in the product of cotangent, it's uh, it's equivalent with respect to some finite index subgroup of SL2Z, namely the matrices that are congruent to the identity modulo m, and it's annihilate, annihilated by uh, the echo operator, are, as you expected, at least the one that are uh, uh, that uh, the TP uh, with p prime to m. So that's. Um, that, that's the kind of thing you can write down and you can write down for uh, in, uh, in any degree. So at this point, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm still uh, uh, over my time, or almost over my time, you may wonder, okay, he's playing with product of uh, uh, cotangent function. This is a fun stuff to do, but uh, why? And uh, I want to give some motivation to, uh, to do that. Uh, and, uh, and the motivation is precisely uh, to build cohomological classes, but non-exotic cohomological classes, but uh, more standard cohomological classes. Because as I say, again, the gamma M equivalent map give a class of cohomology with values in meromorphic form, but now it's really meromorphic form. So you can really evaluate on some point. And you can choose a torsion point in C2 mod Z2. For example, the point, uh, the, the point zero, uh, one over n, which is of order n, and I choose n to be prime to big M. Then you evaluate the uh, cotangent function into distortion points so that you get some element uh, in the cyclotomic field, uh, Q of uh, uh, M, uh, mu uh, MN. And you get, in that way, you get a cohomology class. So when you work in, with the cell 2 z it's a cohomology class of degree one. But in general, you will get cohomology class of degree n minus one. I should say it uh, here. In general, get degree n minus one uh, cohomology. And when you have that kind of classes, you can evaluate on natural cycles. And natural cycles in that, uh, uh, in that setting are associated to group of units of uh, totally real fields that I don't want to discuss, but just to explain you that you go back to, I would say, more standard mathematics. Uh, and, uh, and so for general n, what you get is that uh, when you evaluate this cohomology class, you get special values of L functions on one side, but on the other side, because you have this very explicit expression in terms of uh, cotangent function, then you can express these L values of totally real number field as polynomial in cotangent function evaluated at uh, torsion point of Cn mod Zn. So that's the kind of thing you can gain uh, in general. And if you give me two more minutes, I now want to conclude with a more general uh, situation. And, uh, and, uh, and advertise for what I will uh, uh, say uh, next week. Um, so what I will explain next week is the uh, topological uh, origin of this uh, co-cycle and how it leads to more co-cycle and more, uh, 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 more result on the arithmetic side. Uh, and the, the topological origin is, uh, is, uh, comes from uh, the existence of some nice uh, uh, cohomology class. And, uh, and in fact, this cohomology class comes from the following construction. You start with Cn mod Zn. You erase zero in uh, the class of zero in this quotient. 
this has a, a fundamental class and uh, and in fact what you get uh, now you can leave this uh, fundamental uh, the i mean the whole construction comes from the fact that this fundamental class can be lifted in in uh, what is called a equivalent cohomology group and what is equivalent means that not only you find the cohomology class associated to the fundamental class but also if you translate it by an element g then you can write down explicitly uh, um, uh, the difference between these two uh, these two classes it's a boundary of something and then you can also write down uh, uh, the difference between fg1 g2 and fg1 minus fg2 it's again the boundary of something and etc so you enrich a lot the uh, uh, the cohomology class into something more uh, more uh, refined and uh, and this is really this cohomology this equivalent cohomology class that is at the origin of all the cycle. but once you have this picture in mind you can wonder but what happened if uh, instead of acting uh, of making acting uh, g and z on uh, on cn mod zn zn you look at the action of gl and c on cn or the action of gl and z on the product and full product of elliptic curve or family of elliptic curves and once you do that, you end up with a kind of wor a world of uh, Eisenstein cocycles, uh, which uh, are naturally divided into three, uh, three columns the additive one, the trigonometric cocycle, which we have discussed today, and the elliptic cocycle, which, uh, natural, which comes naturally when you, when you think of this that way. Uh, so the additive cocycles come from the action of GLNC. I, I put a small delta here to see that uh, there is no topology on this GLNC, just uh, the discrete group GLNC. You make it, you make it act on CN, and you have you end up with some uh, affine cocycle of the group GLNC with values in meromorphic form on CN, and the prototype of this meromorphic form comes. The role of cotangent is replaced by dz mod z. On the trigonometric side, we have seen this. G and Z act on C mod Z to the N. You get the trigonometric cocycle, and the, the four I've worked with cotangent function, but it's more natural, in fact, to work with differential form. And you get this, uh, this sum, of course, regularized as, uh, as uh, explained to us by uh, Eisenstein. And in the elliptic side, now you quotient C by Z plus tau z by a lattice, and you can even let tau vary, and you get a, a richer cocycle, the, uh, the elliptic cocycle, that was first considered, uh, in some incarnation of it was first considered by Pierre Charolois, and, uh, and the forms that you see are this kind of form, namely the way Eisenstein constructs uh, elliptic, uh, elliptic functions. And, uh, so in that way, you have a, a family of cocycle, and in fact, each each of these cocycle has some uh, interest. In the first column, there is absolutely no arithmetic because you don't quotient by z, so it's purely a complex uh, thing. But it's already an interesting uh, beast uh, in the in the sense that uh, it relates the topology of uh, of GLNC. Of the, and in fact, of the boundary, uh, the topology at infinity of GLNC, which is the Tits building, to uh, the algebra of, ge of meromorphic form of the form DL over L. And in that way, you get a topological proof of uh, celebrated uh, Ulrich Solomon theorem. So that's what I will describe uh, in uh, that I will start with, with this in my lectures next week. And, uh, and uh, the elliptic cocycle makes a relation between. Uh, uh, the geometry world of uh, arithmetic group and uh, and uh, the arithmetic world of uh, of modular forms, and uh, and you can uh, and I will end up uh, with uh, with this. Uh, it's it's uh, you can enrich this picture by considering elliptic curve with CM multiplication, and uh, then you have beautiful uh, cocycle uh, of degree n minus one of uh, 
subgroup of GLN of OK. And exactly as I described for the trigonometric cross cycle, you, have, you can de deduce from that uh, expression for L values of, uh, uh, of, uh, of L function attached to echo characters or finite, extent, finite extension of uh, uh, quadratic imaginary field. And this will be the subject of uh, the talk of Luis Garcia next week. Uh, and this gives a proof of a conjecture of, uh, of such and Colmes that you that will discuss. So that's, that's uh, three things, three different things uh, what I discussed today with cotangent function. The, the, um, the, the Ulrich Solomon theorem in the affine case and uh, application to these uh, special values in, uh, in, the, in the elliptic case. That are related to this. Uh, uh, that are all related to this to this family of uh, cross cycles that uh, I will describe uh, next next week. Sorry for uh, being a little late. Uh, I will stop here. Are there any? Uh questions uh, or comments for Nicola. Of course, I want to thank you for your lovely lecture. Uh, I don't know if there are any, uh, I guess if you uh, just, probably the best if you have a question and don't forget to unmute yourself and just shout out. I have a quick question right before my battery dies. Um, it might be kind of a silly one though. Uh, do you have anything interesting to say about this, like the appearance of this like trichotomy type thing? With like the additive group and the multiplicative group and the elliptic groups, that's like you see all, everywhere for seemingly no reason. Um, I would say a billion. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. It's uh, I have a very uh, yeah. So, so, I mean, no. I, I don't have something uh, a very deep thing to to say. I mean, the the the, um, uh, the multiplicative case and the, or the tri which I call also trigonometric case and the um, elliptic case are really very related. Uh, I mean, there is this is the same. Uh, uh, you, you can work with a, a family of abelian uh, of abelian groups if you want, and uh, and and everything uh, works. Uh, we work quite the same. Uh, the the additive the the additive or affine case it's a bit uh, it's a bit different, uh, but uh, but but formally everything works quite the same. So I will try to explain this next week. But uh, but uh, I agree it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's not I, I cannot put it in the same framework. So uh, so I I'm sorry my answer is not uh, very uh, I mean. I, it just I, I'm not very satisfied by uh, uh, a good answer for what the, it, uh, the, these three things come together. But um, uh, I, I try to explain the relationship next week. But it's uh, it's not yeah I cannot summarize in one sentence and and say something very satisfactory. Okay, Sorry. thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Hi, uh, may I ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Shady R. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for the great talk. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, the, uh, so Manin uh, introduced modular symbols originally to study uh, Birch and Swinnett and Dyer conjecture for elliptic curves, uh, well, which are initially defined over Q, but you study BSD over abelian extensions. Um, so you're also looking at these particular, uh, so you're allowing a congruent subgroups. So as an example, if we just simply take x not 11 or x not 17 or x not 19, because the, these three are elliptic curves, um, we can ask um, for those particular modular symbols, uh, which uh, uh, correspond to the special value of uh, L function of uh, the elliptic curve E tensor, uh, well, multiplied by the Dirichlet character. Um, in your map C, what would happen if uh, the L value or the sum of these modular symbols, well, the sum of periods of these modular symbols were to vanish? Uh, can one distinguish uh, what would happen in under the image C or under the image of the map C, basically? 
So simply put, what is the image of uh, the sum of modular symbols which naturally arise when one studies abelian extensions over Q under the map C? Mm. I don't know. I mean, the, I, I, I haven't thought to, the, to this. That's a, that's a good question. I, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have to think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, uh, and I had uh, just to clarify because uh, of my naiveness, uh, two questions about a uh, slide uh, 29. Uh, if it's 29, a, okay. Uh, 29. Yes. Yes. Um, so two questions. Uh, are both these things, uh, they have uh, an action of Hecke operators as well? Yes because now we're in congruent subgroups and the right-hand side cohomology is not really a Betty cohomology. It's a really... No, but it, it's, it's uh, I mean, there is a, you mean, which one? I mean, on, on, uh, this one? No, no, uh, the one above it. Oh, this one. Yeah, this one is, yeah. Uh, uh, this one is this. So there, there is the, the, the echo operator I have described before acts exactly uh, as I, uh, I mean, th that's really what I described, the, the echo action. Yeah, the left-hand side, I agree, that's just basically you're looking at a, a finite index group. So uh, that definition basically goes through on the right-hand side. It's a, but uh, but the, that's the same. I mean, that's, uh, this, this, this is really an identification of the, uh, the left and the right-hand side. So, so you, can you can take this, the, this uh, uh, you, you can take, you can transfer the action here. Mm. The the action the action I have defined goes goes to an action here. It goes to, uh, the action I have defined on the left hand side goes to an action on the. I agree. As an isomorphism of vector spaces, it will translate to the right hand side. But um, it would be nice to have a, a geometric uh, intuition of uh, the Hecke action on the right hand that, side. So 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 then then uh, it's so. You 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 see you see the action. Do you uh, do you agree there is an action on the on the on this thing? Echo uh, action on this thing. Uh, I don't see which thing. On the uh, sorry on on the H one of gamma of this. Um. So in fact, in fact. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's basically cohomology of the corresponding uh, modular curve, uh, the compactified modular curve with values in this thing. So, yeah. Exactly. So, in, and in fact, this, the, this action extends to the, uh, extend to the boundary. So, that's why, that's why you, you can also build a, an action here. I see it. Okay. Okay, thanks. And uh, also, um, so for as far as just simple, I mean, if you consider modular forms as uh, sections of line bundles, the it's easy to distinguish uh, Eisenstein series from cus forms. So um, it just in analogy to that, can one think that the image of the map C is uh, going in the cus forms and uh, is in the complement of the Eisenstein uh, classes? No, uh, so f first here, there is no, um, here it's it's meromorphic function on the on C. So there is no modular form at that uh, uh, in that picture here. No, there, no. There, I mean, yes, but you see the you have two different uh, cohomologies: uh, the relative one and uh, the absolute one. Mm -hmm. So the relative one. I mean, if this is just analogously speaking, one can think of the relative one as including the cus forms and the Eisenstein series. Oh, and, but, uh, but so you mean when I speak, when I after evaluation at the point uh, at the torsion point or? Um, I know, no, in the picture right here. So I'm just trying to uh, understand the image of the map C. You mean are you asking is the map Eisenstein or not? Right. Yeah, the uh, uh, I mean C C right. is a, is a, uh, is Eisenstein. Uh, uh, that's um, uh, but you you have to define what is Eisenstein with values yeah. in. Uh, oh, I agree. I agree. That's uh, yes, absolutely. There is no. Uh, I was just going with the uh, 
the standard case or the classical case of uh, mm. and just trying to extend data analysis. Okay, thank you. That was a uh, very interesting. Um, I guess last question. I'm surprised Siri is a male in French. <laughs> si <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I Siri is again? male. Siri is male in French. Siri is. <laughs> Can you try, Henry? Can you help me? I, I, I didn't get the. Siri, he, he's making an allusion to your Siri on your phone uh, or your oh. computer. Oh, what is the name in English? Siri. Siri. Yeah, it's Siri. Yeah. But ah. in English, Siri is a female. I mean, oh. yeah, that was what was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can choose, no? Uh, I, anyway, I don't. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Are there other remarks or questions uh, for their speaker? Uh, uh, I have a question. Oh, oh sorry. Um, so when you consider the setting of uh, extensions of imaginary quadratic fields, what is the modular symbols that you work in that setting with? Are they the modular symbols that are on that are attached to the three hyperbolic space? Uh, I mean, if n equal two, yeah, it's attached to the three uh, three hyperbolic space. Yes. Okay. So, and and if n in uh, so in the in the case when n equal two, so if you have a, uh, it's a Bianchi group, then uh, then uh, you are integrating on the on a just a geodesic uh, in the hyperbolic tree space. In the hyperbolic space, and in, and and in, um, in that case. Um, you consider the Eisenstein Kronecker series to build your co cycle, or? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, what, in that case, that's what I, I have written at the very end. Um, I mean, when I, when I yes, the, what, the, you, re, you replace the cotangent function by, by, this, uh, by this series here, and you take, pro, uh, I mean, the, and the, the series is the third column. And uh, and so you are taking product of uh, d log of e one if you want. Okay. So you re, you re, uh, d log of theta. Sorry, uh, product of e one. Um, so that's the um, so the e one are replacing the the epsilon. Mm. Okay. Thank you. So I think, I think Mike had a question or comment. But yeah. Uh, I, I, by the I, way, I, I, I just. I just realized that I should have said that uh, uh, the elliptic co-cycle in that case, in the, uh, uh, I, I recognize now your name. Uh, I, uh, I've been considered by uh, Flores Carabul. Uh, yes, we, we, yeah, we, we constructed the co-cycle for the imaginary quadratic extensions. For uh, and, uh, yeah. Exactly. Sorry, I, I should mention that the, the trigonometric case, in some sense, it, it's uh, the Sedge co-cycle, except that uh, our view is, I mean, the Sedge co-cycle is not really something which, uh, which gives image in the space of meromorphic form on C mod Z to the N, but it's very related to that. And what you construct is very related to uh, the, the elliptic co-cycle that we see as a co-cycle with values in Meromorphic form on the elliptic curve to the end. So that's. Um, so, right. So the module, module is different, I guess. No? The module is different. The module of. The, the, where yeah, the modules are different, but it's very, it's very related. I mean, that, that I will try to explain this uh, uh, relation in more details uh, in, my, in my lectures, but uh, that's, that's very related. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Since my computer is still alive, I was wondering if I could ask one more quick question. Um, can the trigonometric case be thought of as basically like the sort of semi-degenerate like GLN comma GL1 case of the Eisenstein data lift that you're going to be talking about later? Say it again. Sorry, I, 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 I heard only... Uh, uh, Is the trigonometric co-cycle, can it be thought of as kind of like this sort of semi-degenerate like GLN yeah. comma GL1 case, like dual pair case of the, of the theta? Of the Eisenstein yeah. data, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah exactly it's this, but it's a little bit enriched because uh, uh, we we keep in the picture the the fiber. So the um, uh, for, so if you if you're just interested in uh, in proving, for example, that um, 
uh, in recovering uh, the uh, the link ribet term or, uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, on the integrality of the L values of uh, L function associate, uh, associated to a real quadratic, uh, real uh, totally real field, then uh, you can consider the as you say the GL one GLN uh, theta lift yeah. uh, and work only with R mod Z to the N. Yeah. If you want. But here, here uh, we work with uh, C mod Z to the N and we, uh, I mean, we, we build something which is richer uh, uh, and which is a co-cycle with values in these meromorphic functions that are product of, uh, of, um, of cotangent functions. But say it's a bit richer and the, this go a bit outside the, just the theta lift picture. It's like a theta lift where you add the, add the fiber. Uh, okay. And that's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that explains the difference between, uh, if you want, the Sedge co-cycle. If you know, I know you know a bit the story, sorry for, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, that's a bit, the dif that explains the difference between the Sedge co-cycle, which is really a co-cycle with values in functions, uh, in space, uh, in, 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 in function space, and uh, let's say Nori co-cycle or Bellinson Kings Levin co-cycle, which is a scalar ah. value co-cycle. Yeah. And, uh, and the different the difference uh, the, the the difference is that is exactly that is that uh, you you keep you keep track of the of the form on the on the on the fibers. Okay. So, and you have this like a meromorphic. Now you can see this like meromorphicity type of thing as well. Exactly. That that that's uh, so. You have to say something because uh, if you just want the link ribet or something, it's just topology in some sense. But if you want relation between meromorphic functions, then at some point you have to be able to say that uh, uh, the the class takes value into something that is meromorphic. So from pure topology, you have to say something to go to meromorphic forms. That's um, uh, so. Uh, I mean that that's what I find amusing although it's not so in, maybe it's uh, it's a bit uh, outside the mainstream of maths but but I, I find quite amusing that from the topology you you find relations between uh, meromorphic forms or uh, and uh, as I say it's a kind of baby case for uh, uh, for uh, uh, for these uh, the things considered by Sharifi or Goncharov yeah. and so on, where where you you start from modular symbol and you find relation between very algebraic things like uh, K theory groups. Here, here the very algebraic things are uh, meromorphic forms on uh, on uh, C n or C mod Z n or uh, or elliptic curve to the n. So that that's uh, and, and the difference is that now you can deal with arbitrary n and that okay the, you gain some you. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Thanks. And I guess the the thing about the additive case is that there's really the additive case is somehow different because there's really no real link to the theta lifting picture. It is kind no, of no, no, no. Uh, the you you'll see, you'll see. There is a link. There yeah. is a. I mean, there, of course, there is no theta series, but uh, it's kind of the uh, the the essence of the phenomena is here, and uh, it's about the test function at infinity, and and okay. and. Uh, uh, and the difference between the additive and the trigonometric and elliptic case is that the additive case only deals with what happened at infinity, and the other you have to add the test function at, at the finite places. So mm. I, okay. I, I, I will try to uh, to explain this. Uh, so I will spend, in fact, I will spend more time on the additive case than the, um, the others in some sense. Oh, some okay. Um, okay, I'm looking forward to it. Great. Oh, I think Mike was had raised his hand. Uh, yeah, I, I did have a question I wanted to uh, to ask. So, um, <clears throat> if you have a um, um, if you have a closed cycles worth of these unimodular um, um, unimodular modular symbols, you get some kind of trigonometric identity up to a constant, yeah. right? So it, it is is that constant related to like the area? The yeah, the constant is a is a Dedekin Hadam. I mean, it's related to the Dedekin Hadamard uh, cycle. Uh, so, ah, yeah, it's, okay. Yeah, because okay. you yeah you are decomposing to the um, 
I mean, the, uh, is it the, I mean, the, the one that, um, mm, uh, you, you, that you see in the uh, in this paper of Atiya or the, or the uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is that you have uh, you have uh, a class of bounded cohomology uh, and uh, that that, co that comes from the fact that this this is not completely a cocycle. This is a cocycle up to a bounded thing and which is related to the area. And, uh, that's, uh -huh. uh, okay, great, thanks. So I have a little follow-up question. I was a bit. I wanted to clarify one point in your talk. So at the beginning, you had this cycle that was only uh, up to an additive constant, right? Uh, but then later, you have this refinement for general n, mm. which is taking values not in m bar but in m. Yeah. But but you said it's the same. Yeah, it's so the same. It's the same. But uh, I mean, it's a, it defines the same cohomology class. When you go uh, mod out by the constant, but but yeah. then it has no. It's not a. Uh, I mean, at, in level one, the formula is not uh, is not a product of uh, of cotangent function because it can't. I mean, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's some meromorphic form. That, that's um, uh, it's some meromorphic function. So the, so, so the cocycle does lift to M, but uh, yeah, in a, but in the opposite way. Uh, the co the cohomology class does, does lift to uh, to m, but not in an easy way. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what you can do is uh, add level. And uh, here, there, there, I was quite uh, uh, unprecise about that. But you add level and you do some operation that is a smoothing operation, so that now you can pass to uh, if you pass to the some level and do the smoothing, then you can recover. You can rewrite the cycle as a linear uh, uh, sum of product of cotangent function in such a way that you kill the constant. And the expression, that's, um, that's what I have written uh, <coughs> um, here. You see now, now you have this, expre this expression, which is a, a sum of product of cotangent functions. But uh, uh, because it's uh, more complicated, if uh, now it really satisfies the relation between modular symbols, but you can consider only partial modular symbols, uh, uh, yeah. and, and so and so now it's really a product. Uh, but if you are in level one and you want to lift to meromorphic function, then you have to to you. It cannot be written only in terms of product of uh, e one uh, of uh, well, yeah. tension. That's um, mm. okay. Or not without hitting by a HECA operator or something. No, yeah. Or oh, I, I would. So I, I was wondering if you could kind of kill. I mean, I suppose you could kill this ambiguity by sort of like acting on the thing by an appropriate HECA operator. Yeah, essentially, that's uh, that's what the smoothing is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, okay, another question, maybe I don't know if there are any other. Uh, yes, so you mentioned that this cycle, this Eisenstein cycle of yours, you, you uh, want to evaluate it eventually at torsion points of these. Uh, yeah. Are there any other interesting special values that one could envisage aside from the torsion points? Uh, I mean, are there other specialization maps that could be conceivable? Uh, the, the thing is that if you want something scalar, then uh, you want a point that in uh, that is invariant by a finite index subgroup of gamma. So uh, okay, so but or not points that maybe have slightly smaller stabilizers but still large couldn't be. Uh, yeah, that, that 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 could that could be uh, inter. I haven't tried this yet, but uh, but that, that could be an interesting thing to try. Yes, uh, uh, I mean, a priori you can. Try to any points outside the bad hyperplanes, and take the stabilizer and uh, hope yeah. and look at uh, it gives a class, so it's um, right. Are there any other remarks or questions for Nicola? Well. Uh, if not, I want to, I guess we'll stop here and I want to give a special thanks to the speaker since we've held him uh, quite late. I guess it's almost uh, 
uh, almost 11, right, in Paris. So, uh, well, thank you very much for... I still, I still can't go home without sleeping in my office. So. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah, the, the curfew is not yet... Uh, yeah. So thank you uh, very much for this excellent lecture. And thank you.